Hello my dear friends, you're on the military summary channel and this short video we're going to discuss the most important updates that took place during the previous night at the local time. Before we start with Ukraine, of course, I would like to discuss with you the reports and the messages that we received from Washington, the United States of America. According to information we have, the United States uh, through the Swiss embassy sent a message to Iran that said, take no further action following US retaliatory measures. Uh, I don't know what does it mean. Uh, there might be lots of options what this uh, this note, this message could mean. Uh, first, let's take a look at Iranian reply. And the Iranians were saying that Iran has told US via intermediaries that if it strikes Iranian soil directly, Tehran will itself hit back at American assets in the Middle East, drawing the two sides into direct conflict. So I don't know how to understand these words, how to understand the most important the US states. Uh, maybe they managed to uh, get some agreement and the United States of America now knows, currently knows that they can attack the, let's say, according to the US terrorist organization everywhere, but not on the territory of Iran. Uh, maybe that was the purpose of that message to understand and clarify the um, so the, the red lines, because now the United States of America for sure knows the red lines of Iran. They knew the red lines of Russian Federation and the US managed to cross every single one of them. And now the United States of America know for sure the Iranian red lines. Whether they are going to cross them as well, who knows? We'll see. Now we are moving to the situation in Ukraine. We have a few interesting political updates. If you remember, just a few days ago we were talking that um, Hungary politicals were saying that if Ukraine falls, they will take and they will demand to return their historical territories on the western part of Ukraine. And today, the Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, told Hungarians that break that it, that uh, this situation, and that Hungarians politicians would break their teeth on Ukraine. Mm, we'll see. We'll see what is going to be next. What can we say? When talking about political situation in Ukraine, of course, uh, the most important is that not political, military political update is that the United States of America uh, will provide the Ukrainians new uh, batch, the first batch of advanced guided bombs to Ukraine tomorrow with a range of nearly 150 kilometers. So uh, this is going to be probably a test batch. Uh, there, this uh, batch will not change the game on the ground in the sky as well. But anyway, the states will be able to understand whether there are able to penetrate the Russian defense belt and whether they are able to, let's say, to break the situation if they start using this type of weapon massively. Uh, when talking about Ukraine, uh, if you remember those days, we were talking about the dismiss of Zaluzhny and uh, uh, we a lot. there were a lot of rumors, talks, and the rumors and talks continue spreading and growing. And that today, for example, the sources are saying that either the head of Ukraine army, uh, Sirsky infantry army, Sirsky, and uh, the head of Ukraine intelligence service, Buddha, of both refused Zelensky to uh, take position of Zaluzhny. And this is disaster if it's true because Zelensky was uh, trying to have some base, some support from Ukrainian army and he was uh, building his uh, support and his power in Ukrainian army based on two persons, Sirsky and Budanov. And now we see that both of them, according to some rumors, refused to take this position, which means that Zelensky doesn't have any support in the army at all. So, of course, now for now, it's it's just uh, games and fairy tales. The most important things are going to start happening on the 31st of March, in the end of March, when Zelensky will um, f finish his constitutional right to be the president of Ukraine. Uh, furthermore, don't forget that in February, within two weeks, uh, the martial law is going to be ended and Zelensky needs to prolong this period of time. So we'll see what is going to be next. Uh, furthermore, uh, Zelensky understand that uh, the deputies of Ukraine tried to... Uh, to, to uh, try to um, not to vote and not to adopt any mobilization law in this period of time they also want to wait till the uh, let's say end of Zelensky constitution rights and so on as I understand there is just one man in Ukraine who wants to continue war and this is Zelensky and everybody everyone else like Zaluzhny deputies and other people don't want this war even I don't know at least I have this feeling that and because of that fact that he has legal rights as the president of Ukraine he can force everyone 
everyone in Ukraine to continue this war. And everybody waits for this uh, end of March and end of martial, uh, let's say, a period of time in February and the next prolongation f to complete the special military operation and to surrender. At least I have this feeling. Maybe I'm wrong. But anyway, according to the new mobilization law, there are going to be a lot of restrictions. The Ukrainians are going to um, uh, all aged uh, all aged citizens uh, from um, 18 to uh, 60 years old who are registered uh, must have a military registration documents uh, men aged 18 25 are sent to complete basic service and uh, if you're older than 25 years you will be mobilized or uh, there are going to be uh, something like private accounts special web and mobile application where people men and women need to registrate and have their personal data so everything is going to a total war by Zelensky. but once again the end of march the end of february is going to be the most important period of time in political uh, let's say from political perspective um another important things about budanov and the situation on the ground uh, today uh, the uh, ukrainian minister of intelligence reported that uh, the Ru russians managed to if uh, the uh, the parallel import works quite effectively by passing sanctions and obtaining the necessary components from the west and east so that was the head of uh, let's say intelligence budanov he says that the russians don't have any problems to get even um, let's say very um, rare uh, parts and equipment from western countries including the united states of america and we understand why because for example just uh, these days we receive a lot of updates about the russian gdp growth and according to information we have russia Russia GDP growth in 2024 is going to be around on the level of 2.6%. 2023 ended with 3% growth of GDP. The next year is 2.6. I think that the growth is going to be even bigger even bigger because uh, very likely that the next year uh, this year 2024 the russia may capture additional territories of ukraine and this can lead to additional growth of gdp additional investments fundings of this territory and so on and if it's true if it comes then we can say that russian russia economy is the big uh, not the biggest is the most it's going to be the biggest probably economy in europe and uh, it will improve their position and probably going to take the fourth position in the world um, now we are moving to the situation on the ground. We have a lot of very interesting updates. Uh, the Russia, Russia during the previous 24 hours attacked Kharkiv once again. There were lots of explosions according to information we have. Probably the Russians continue hunting the French officers or something like this. And furthermore, the Russians also attacked Kriminchuk oil refinery and explosions took place uh, in other cities and uh, place, places of Ukraine. When talking about the situation on the ground, I expect that today we're going to receive significant number of updates from Klishevka, uh, Ivanovska and Bogdanovka territories. When talking about Klishevka, as we discussed during the previous uh, days, uh, since the 21st of January, we received significant number of geolocations on the hill. We saw a lot of FPV drone strikes and as you can see, some configuration of Ru some structure of Russian strikes. And uh, if this territory that was under Russian fire is located on the hill and according to information we have this morning uh, that video was published by the russian soldier he was saying that uh, today on the 30th of january so he was making this video yesterday we got an order to start uh, clearing and storming assault operation of the very important western part of Klishevka. He says that we are entering the western part. Uh, there are very heavy clashes, very bloody battle, and uh, he promises to return with the very good news and something like this. So according to that man, uh, the uh, Russians started a full-scale op offensive operation in direction with in Klishevka with the purpose to complete the battle for this village and to establish complete control over this territory and to force the Ukrainians to step back. Very difficult difficult to understand where exactly they were attacking but obviously during the previous days the russians suppressed uh, machine gun positions sniper mortar positions on the hill in this area and, and with that they managed to clear the way and now they're trying to storm this territory so we'll see but once again i believe today we're going to receive more updates from this territory a little bit to the north we got another geolocated video of russian attack in direction of popovo forest on this since we can see the russian infantry on the personnel armored carriers moving 
moving along the fields in direction of the stronghold and this is the process of assaulting the stronghold the russians were attacking the ukraine suppressing the ukraine positions this video was geolocated and probably uh, it's not like 100 percent sure but most it's very difficult it was very difficult to geolocate but according to most of the mappers this attack took place here there is a trenches there is a forest bell that we saw in the video and this is the first geolocated confirmation of Russian progress and very likely that something like this was captured by the Russians and as you can see the Russians are getting closer and closer to Popovo forest so uh, they're just trying to maintain the gray zone and uh, we remember that Popovo forest was under very heavy fire during the previous weeks and days and uh, the Russians very likely are going to attack in this area again also and maybe today we're going to receive some updates about the clashes for this territory now we are moving to Avdiivka area. We have lots of updates, very interesting updates. We have two important geolocations. The Russian sources published the series of FPV drone strikes against Tsarskaya Ahoten. Very difficult to understand when exactly this video was made. Uh, at least that episode, particular episode was made because, uh, for example, the pro-Ukrainian propaganda channels uh, tells uh, says that the Ukrainians counterattacked in this area and managed to restore control over Tsarskaya Ahoten. So, according to pro-Ukrainian channels, the Ukrainians attack along Lisova Street, probably, and establish control over this territory. Furthermore, according to pro-Ukrainian sources, now the Russian forces that are located in the area along uh, Saborne Spartina and Chernyshevska Street are encircled and cut off from the mainland. And this is, let's say, uh, the narrative and updates that we you can find today from the Ukraine channels. I can't tell you whether it's true or not, but yes, indeed, we have few geolocations from this territory, including Ukrainian attack on the uh, with armored vehicles and personal carriers, with landing operation, with FPV drone strikes. So th there were updates telling us that say, the Ukrainians man maybe managed to um, did something like this, but nobody knows the dates because the those attacks could take place on the 20th of January or even earlier during the beginning of this operation or maybe these events took place yesterday or the day before yesterday. The Russians published the video of artillery strikes against the Ukrainian positions on the southern part of let's say Kirova Street which also confirms uh, let's say that the Russians are moving focus further to the north. So let's wait. It's this area completely covered with fog of war but if the Ukrainians manage to regain control over Tsarska of Hota of course this might cause significant problems for the Russians. Let's say, I'm not saying anything, uh, we need more details to make any conclusions. When talking about Novomikhailovka, we haven't received anything, just the military summary map changed this territory, showing this area under Russian control. From videos, we got FPV drone strike against the Ukrainian forces on the north and outskirts of the village. So we see that also the Russians are changing, are moving their focus closer to uh, village itself. And uh, very important that I don't remember FPV drone strikes to tell the truth in the past. There were FPV drone bombings, there were uh, FAPs, uh, Toslan Towers, and now the Russians start uh, actively using FPV drones. Maybe the Russians are changing tactics and the changes of the tactics completely connected with the situation that the Russians are getting closer and closer to village from the north itself. Important updates are coming from Vremevka tactical bridgehead. If you remember, we were talking that the Russians, as a result of offensive operation, managed to establish control over a huge let's say territories and sector to the north of Pryutina and we were making suggestions where exactly the Russians are going to move further either Livadne or uh, Novodaryevka or uh, Rovnopol and for example today we got one important geolocation uh, this one the Russians were bombing this territory with Toslan Tower systems which we can consider as a possible evidence that the Russians took a decision to move further exactly along this road in direction of Rovnopol after suppression if you can positions with flamethrower system heavy flamethrower system obviously the Russians will try their luck and to attack this territory with additional armored fields and tanks so maybe this is the russian possible direction if it's true then the right main russian purpose is to cut supply of staromayorsk along this road which will allow them to continue their offensive operation inside of the village from let's say western direction and uh, in direction of the village uh, from the south so we'll see but for this they need first to cut the supply road we haven't received anything from Rabotina or zaporozhia the only updates we have uh, from Kherson about the work of sabotage group inside 
side of the city. Uh, the Russians are saying that they managed to destroy another railway station, energy facilities. So just a, a, a small episode of some activity of the Russian reconnaissance and sabotage and partisan groups inside of Kherson, because the Russians recently start talking a lot about the returning of the city under Russian control. And that's it for today. Military Summer Channel reminds to condemn any violence in the world. Thank you for your watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes to my Patreon. And have a good day. Bye-bye.